Hello, everyone. Debbie Kelly here to talk about the SARE Farmer Rancher Grant. Yes, every time this year, this grant comes out, and it's always exciting to be able to present this information to you. So what is SARE? SARE is actually a USDA agency in Washington, D.C. It started back in 1988 as a decentralized, science-based, grassroots practical solving agency where it wanted the farmers to be involved with being able to come up with their ideas and concepts of what they could do successfully on the farm. SARE is divided up into four regions and Missouri is located in the North Central region. So the North Central SARE strengthens communities, increases producers' economic viability, and improves the environment through grants and education. So the North Central SARE Farmer Rancher Grant are grants available for farmers to explore ideas, concepts, your thoughts of brainstorming ideas on ways to solve some of your issues or problems that you might have on the farm, whether it's production, marketing, labor, or other types of topics. Usually these practices are gonna be tested through your own on-farm research, through education, or through demonstration projects that you have on the farm, where you also have the results that are shared with other farmers so they can be just as successful as you are. Listed here on this slide is the actual link to where the RFA, the referral for application is actually located. And it's gonna be also located embedded into the newsletter as well. So what are some of the different topic areas that they might fund? Uh, let's look at beneficial insects, pollinator habitats, uh, regenerative agriculture is a new buzz term that's out there, water quality, soil health, educating or mentoring new farmers, managed grazing, direct marketing, value added, a lot of different topics out there as long as it falls into that realm of economic viability and sustainability and helps with farms and farming communities. Guidelines. The project can be an on-farm research that you do yourself. It can be a demonstration that you're doing on your farm to educate others, or you can actually do an education project where you are teaching other farmers about something that you know that you've been successful at. Funding is for 23 months, and in the project year of 2024, there is a total of $725,000 across the 12 states in the North Central region. As an individual farmer, you can apply for up to $15,000. As a team, which is either two farms or more, you can get up to $30,000 for your particular proposal. So the guidelines, what is it? A farmer is defined as someone who raises crops or livestock, especially as a business. If you are applying for a team grant, the participants in that grant must be separate farms. Can you be the same family? Yes. However, you have to be on separate different farms with separate different farm numbers. And also for the team grant, one of the farmers must be the main project coordinator. There are different sections within the proposal. You need to have the actual project proposal itself, the who, what, when, where, and why. You must have a budget and a budget narrative justification explaining what are those different things in the budget that you need to do in order or need to have in order to have a project come to fruition. Letter of support, and usually only one is required. And then if you're doing a team grant, there must be confirmation commitment, a letter or a description of who all the other farmers are going to be and that they are committed to the project. If your project entails livestock, then you will have to fill out all the forms for the livestock care plan. They want to make sure that, that the livestock are well taken care of. So the actual success of proposals, you want to make sure that your problem or issue is clearly defined and what is your specific solution for that particular problem and, and how clearly it is described so that those people who are reviewing your application will understand exactly what you're trying to, to accomplish. 
involve cooperators, so other farmers that are in the area. As an individual farmer, you don't need a second farmer on your proposal, but are you cooperating with other entities that are out there who might be involved in some capacity that might be helping you to advise you or perhaps helping you to promote your project so others can learn from you? They're emphasizing outreach. How are other people going to learn about your project and learn from you? Also, do you have a plan to measure and to document the project and to show its successes? And if the project is comes to a, a failure for the results, that's okay too, because then people will learn that they want to avoid doing that as a solution for that problem and perhaps look in a different direction. So a lot of times failures are a success. Also demonstrate that your project fits within Sayer's mission. We mentioned that in just an earlier slide. And then to address reviewer concerns. So if your proposal was not awarded, they will have comments so that you can improve upon your proposal and submit it in for a chance to be able to get awarded the following year. How is the proposal actually evaluated? Here we list up to a thousand, up to a hundred points. So the project leader team gets 10 points. In other words, who are you? What kind of experience do you have in farming or you have in this particular topic that your proposal is about? What is the design of the project? Who's gonna do it? What are you actually gonna do? What is the flow? How are you gonna accomplish it? That's 30%. Does the project actually contribute to the growth of sustainable agriculture? And that will be a total of 15%. Outreach is 20%. So what are you going to do to let other farmers, other producers hear about your project and learn from you? And then the results are 15%. How well does it actually, did you actually accomplish what it was that you were trying to do with the actual project itself? And then an appropriate budget to be 10%. So let's look at the budget because budgets are always the most important thing that people really wanna look at. First of all, there's no match required. What that means is this is 100% funded through SARE for your particular project up to that 15,000 for an individual or up to 30,000 if there's two or more people that are involved. So you don't have to pay for things out of your own pocket uh, in order to get that funding. It's, they'll provide you the funding, but you may have to add to it on your own, perhaps. Personnel, you can pay for salaries. There is in the RFA, the referral for application, a suggested amount of uh, dollars per hour for payment. Materials and supplies that are needed for the project. And there's some uh, examples that are listed here and you must justify why you need those projects. If there's any travel that you need to do, you can pay up to 65.5 cents per mile uh, for traveling to where you're going to offer a workshop or to be able to pick up some of these supplies that can't be shipped, for example. Other direct costs such as speakers, um, consultants, communications, which means marketing your project or marketing the results of your project. If you're going to attend a conference, a meeting, or some different workshops where you're going to be presenting the results, those would be considered other direct costs. Equipment and permanent fencing, perennial seeds and plants, up to 50% of the cost of these items with a justification is why they're needed for your particular project. So usually this kind of a category, it's gonna be, those items are gonna last longer than what the project of 23 months is going to be. Therefore, they're only gonna pay up to 50%. Budgets and items that are not allowed. This is not for your everyday farming expenses. It's not to start a farm or to expand a farm or to try to continue doing what you're currently doing. Equipment costing more than $5,000 is not allowable. If it's under $5,000 and it's a piece of equipment, for example, then they'll pay up to 50% of that. Capital expenses, infrastructure is not allowed. Permanent improvement to the farm, fen permanent fencing, perimeter fencing, insurance, construction is not allowed. Any meal that does not contain the continuity of a meeting. 
So if you have an event, a workshop, or a that's going to be an all-day workshop, you can serve a meal because there may not be a location close by for them to go eat lunch and come back. If you're doing a farm tour or having folks come to the farm for maybe two or three hours, maybe having a snack or a refreshment might be okay for that. And if you're looking to test specific new commercial products, that is not allowable. Here is the grant cycle. So the proposals are due on December 7th by 4 p.m. Usually they're done online. If you're not available to do a lot of this online, Joan Benjen Benjamin is the person to contact with North Central SARE. Her information is going to be here in just a little bit. Usually mid-February, if you are awarded, you'll be notified. March 15th could be a good start date. So think about that. And anything that you purchase before you sign your contract, you will not be reimbursed for this. Starting January 15th of 2025, a progress report is due. And then January 15th of 2026, a final and end project is, is due. So in March, once you first start your grant, you'll get 50% of the funds that you've requested. When you turn in your progress report, you'll get 35% that's left of that 50% that you did not get originally. And then at the end of the project, when your final project and report is due, then you'll get the last funding amount of money. Again, here is the website so that you can go out and actually look at and download the RFA so you can read through that. The application is part of that RFA. And then on October 4th at 4 p.m. is a webinar that North Central SARE will be hosting. And I'd highly recommend that you go ahead and um, sign up for that because you'll learn a lot and have a lot of your questions that you might have that can be answered at that webinar. To sign up for that webinar, just go to the website that's up on the screen and you will can um, automatically sign up for that and you'll get an email with the link and it'll help you to put in that proposal. <laughs>